horrible winter weather is coming. Uh, winter in the UK is mainly mud and rain. No snow, unfortunately. For you who watched episode number one, uh, stage number two, where I was looking at the tiller shaft, I found some video of the individual parts, uh, how they looked when I received them from the laser cutting company. I just used the deburring tool and uh, made a uh, an overview of how to weld them together for uh, my friend who was doing the welding. And this is how I passed the uh, parts over to him. Today I am working on the keel box lid. Uh, there is a, a lip that goes around the actual keel box that needs to be welded to the keel box so that the lid can be bolted to this, this lip. So I'm just aligning this up so that when I put this keel box lid on top of the actual keel box, I can tack it so that it is in the right position for the bolt alignments after the weld. So that is the plan for today, just to make sure that this is all straight. I might also do some sanding to prep for some of the um, top welds. There's going to be a full weld all around uh, on, the, on the inside. Uh, and then there will also be a, uh, a couple of welds on the top just to strengthen it up a bit. Okay, what I've done is sanded all of these, this lip I was mentioning, so that we have a little sanding groove along the way here in an equal distance so that when the keel box goes on here it is then fully welded on the outside around the whole area but then when I take the lid off I can then fill in these these grooves and then sand it down just to get some strength from from both directions uh, and then uh, yeah should uh, should do the trick Morning. Um, so I'm on my way to a welding academy. I've arranged to uh, spend two days with them to learn the uh, basics of uh, welding, as I haven't done an aluminium welding before. Uh, I also agreed with them to buy one of their school equipment. They sell them out every year, so that I can practice on the same equipment that I will take with me and actually use for the boat. Uh, the reason for doing it that way is that if I try to learn how to weld by myself and the welds come out bad as they will do in the beginning there's no real way for me to knowing how much of that bad welding is me and how much is maybe a second-hand equipment I bought so at least now I can see one of the teachers use the equipment I will be using and doing fantastic welds which then means that any bad welds is down to me and my technique and not the equipment so um so that's the full process behind that one so um yeah we'll see how it goes exciting
During the welding course I had a chance to do some quality tests. Uh, so this is 5 tons pressure that's gone on a butt joint. The uh, welding course was absolutely amazing. Big shout out to Kev who's running the uh, welding academy. He couldn't do enough to uh, help me and I am super grateful. I spent two days uh, welding with equipment that is mine as mentioned uh, that I bought of him and also welding materials uh, that I will be welding when I am building parts of the boat. So uh, all in all, fantastic experience. All I need to do now is just to get a couple more parts so I can set up my uh, own little uh, welding station and then I can start welding. The uh, plans come with 3D files that I can use to print the actual size of the ingots. So I have 3D printed these in plastic just to have something to mold against. This is the smallest of all the uh, lead parts for the keel. So it's the one that sits top left. So I only need one of these. So in, in short, I'll save this one in case anyone is building the same boat and need it. Give me a shout after the uh, actual casting. Uh, I don't need it anymore, so I might as well give it away. The uh, weld are a bit proud of the welds, so it doesn't fit snug as of yet. But before I actually fit the lead, I can then do the final modification, sand down the welds, and also if I have to remove anything uh, from the actual lead ingots, uh, then I can do that during fitting. Starting off by creating a mold frame of some plywood. So I'm going to cut up some pieces of wood and just screw them to the side so that I can adjust the, uh, the size of the frame uh, to whatever size I need at the, at the moment. I might have to create a bigger version of this as well, but uh, we'll start with this one. By adding a piece of wood at the end, I can now decide on length and width uh, and just clamp it up once I've set it to the desired length and width with some clamps here uh, and by doing so you have a a dynamic box which you can set to the uh, size that you need uh, for your casting and off to the local hardware store to get some clamps Four traditional F clamps, just what I need, so all good. With clamps on, it now looks like this, and I have set it to a, a width and a length that I think is good. I've left a little bit extra on this side, on that side, because I'm going to make a little key here, a little key there, so when I put the uh, male and female molds together, before casting, I know that they sit in the, in the right position. Using some uh, non-toxic new plast to build up around the actual item itself. I bought it quite a long time ago, so it looks like it dried out. I'm gonna see if I can put some uh, water in and, and get it more into a clay-like state again. If not, I might have to chuck it and get some new. To help me uh, divide it into two equal uh, part of the mold and to get a guide of what's straight. I've just drawn a center line along the piece uh, Something to uh, be able to use as a reference as I uh, start putting the clay in I have uh, put the Part that I'm casting on a four centimeter high bed of clay and I will now start building up around it. I will probably fill in the sides uh, with a couple of layers of uh, cardboard just to save myself on having to work with so much clay. So just probably build up a little bit of a base there on each side and then put some uh, clay on top of that. Pure uh, mineral oil as a release agent. So I will be cover the, uh, the actual item uh, with this oil before I cast to make sure that I can get it uh, out easily. For the actual casting, I'm going to use uh, just fine finishing plaster. I hope I can uh, get away with that. 
instead of having to buy anything that is specialized this can be picked up from your, your local builders merchant so uh, we'll see how that goes this is a good place for me to stop the clay i'm using it's quite old so it's quite hard to work it so i might order a couple of fresh sets that i can use to lay out on the top just to uh, save myself some time so i'm gonna put this one on pause for now and pick it up another day in stage number three i focused on the tiller bearings so these are the bearings so you can see in front of you here so there's one set of upper and lower tiller shaft bearings and some Delrin, uh, Delrin uh, bushings on the inside to allow the actual tiller to tiller arm to uh, to swivel. So you got the the top piece, which will be welded onto the. Uh, don't know if it's the transom or if it's just actually one of the bulkheads, one of the last bulkheads. Uh, but it's overhangs at the top. And you will have this bush going in. And then you have the bottom one, which is capped, which will then have a an Delrin bottom piece going in here at the bottom. And that will allow it to swivel. This piece um, came to uh, 285 and 17 pence, Great Britain pounds. And obviously it included welding of the aluminium parts and some uh, lathing of the, uh, the round parts. Uh, I don't have a lathe. I actually have a lathe, but not this size. So this uh, was actually done by a professional machinist. So that came with a cost as well as the uh, cutting of the parts, the uh, material itself and the actual welding of these parts. So uh, let's look at a breakdown of, of uh, this stage. For stage three tiller bearings, uh, the aluminium uh, bearings and the Delrin bearings, the material cost was 98.50 Great British Pounds. And external labor was 186.67 Great British pounds. For anyone interested in a full breakdown of costs and parts, I will leave a link to the Modular Hippo Kiribati blog page in the description below. On this page you will find all completed and ongoing stages of the build together with links to the related blog posts, showing a full itemized cost breakdown divided into material cost, external labor and tools and miscellaneous. In stage 4 I made these uh, bracket spaces, so when the actual tiller shaft is mounted onto the uh, to the rear of uh, the boat or the aft of the boat when you are turning the tiller the clamp that clamps onto the rudder stocks and also the clamp that clamps onto the uh, tiller stock itself uh, becomes a bit proud so these brackets and spaces as you can see all these spaces they are allowing uh, for that clamp to not uh, hit the uh, the aft of the boat so you uh, uh, three of those are needed once again I hadn't started to weld when uh, I uh, did the stage so uh, you have the laser cutting cost you have the material itself and also external welding for me uh, which obviously if you weld yourself you don't have to uh, to look at that so let's look at the, the breakdown of, of that cost as well For uh, stage four, which was the tiller brackets and the spaces, the material cost was 99.84 GBP, 
and external labor was 8218 GBP. So for stage three and four, total came to 476.35 British pounds, which is roughly 568.44 US dollars. So conclusion, if we look at the cost tracking and conclusions sheet for stages one to four, on row three, you can see my true cost uh, between these four stages is 2,547.43 pounds, which is roughly 2,952 and 78 dollars. Uh, on the following rows, four, five, six, and seven, I'm just giving uh, hypothetical examples that if I, for example, on row four, did all my welding myself, I would have saved myself 155 pounds so far, which is 6.08% uh, of the total cost. Row five, if I did all the welding, lathing and machining myself, I would have saved myself to now 356.67, which is 40% of the total cost. If I did all the welding, lathing, machining and lofting, which means that I didn't buy the CNC plans, I would have saved myself £1530.10, which is 60%. And if I did all of the above, plus I didn't have to buy any tools or miscellaneous so far, which I've only spent £9 on, I would have saved myself £1539.26, which is 60.42% of the total cost. So in short, if you have the skills and the tools up front, you can save yourself a lot of money by doing things yourself. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.